just to do a quick introduction of myself, I've been working with companies for about the past 20 years, uh, implementing sales and marketing, uh, basically customer-facing systems for them, uh, from uh, you know that sales and marketing site right through to call centers and support and that type of thing. Uh, the web webinar today is to look at dynamic CRM. I've worked with it for about uh, 10 years. It's really our platform of choice. Uh, so what I'll do is give you a CRM uh, overview first of the uh, the industry and then uh, really getting right into uh, uh, dynamic CRM itself. We have other webinars. Uh, there, we've got a sales process methodology webinar. We have um, uh, marketing. We have um, a number of other ones. And they get a little deeper into the various areas. This one is meant just to be a, an overview. Uh, but I'll have some uh, specific specific examples of what other companies uh, have done with it. Okay, next slide. Uh, so for today, we'll do that quick overview. Uh, look at how it integrates with uh, Outlook and Office. Uh, a little on account management, contact management, opportunity management. Uh, a bit on dashboards and analytics. Uh, and uh, a little bit into uh, integrated marketing, and if we have some time, I'll show you inside view as well, uh, which is, uh, uh, we like to call that smart data. Okay, so to jump right into an overview, and I only have a few PowerPoint slides, I'll probably spend about two or three minutes on the slides. Uh, most of the time will be spent uh, with dynamic CRM itself. Uh, but what I, why I like showing this slide is it shows uh, movement over time. So I've got uh, three uh, essentially time uh, snapshots from uh, Forrester uh, research. So I've got 2007, 2010, uh, 2010, and then the last one's 2012. And what it shows is uh, three versions of CRM uh, from Microsoft as it compares to the rest of the marketplace. So in uh, 2007, you can see that Dynamic CRM was seen as uh, one of the leaders in terms of strategy. A little weaker in terms of offering, but you know, as you know, Microsoft continually reinvests, and that was really seen in their next release, which was called CRM 4, and that came out in around 2010 through 2009. And you can see here that uh, when the research was done, it was seen as a leader both in terms of offering and strategy. And if you look at the size of the circle, you can see the market share grew significantly as well. Okay, fast forward to last year, and it was seen again as the leader. This is uh, uh, large scale. In the mid-market, it actually was uh, up about here. Uh, so it was seen as a leader, uh, again, in both in terms of offering and strategy. Uh, and as well, it was of this quadrant, the one that had the most complete market presence. So even though Oracle did scoot over here because they came out with an online offering, it really wasn't a complete offering. So Dynamics, again, uh, is still seen as uh, uh, the leader, if not uh, one of the key leaders in the, in the area. Okay, some of the reasons for its, its leadership is, one, it's easy to use. So it, it works right out of Outlook. It will also work out of any uh, like tablet device, web browser, smartphones, that type of thing. And it's all, and everything I show you today will be done with the uh, one license. So you don't have to purchase extra licenses just because you want to have it, you know, running on a tablet or running on your smartphone. Okay? Uh, the fact that it, it runs out of Outlook, and really the only one that will run natively uh, out of Outlook and, and connect with Office is really meant to do that. Uh, that's one of the key features of why people like using it. Okay? Uh, it's configurable so you're not faced with a situation where it's a new tool and now you have to change your business to the run the way it runs. Uh, it really can complement your own strategies. And what we find in working with companies is that we, we help them create new strat strategies that then leverage the tool, uh, not the other way around. Uh, it integrates with what you have. So you don't need uh, you know, a Microsoft ERP system. Uh, in order to use Dynamics. You can use, we've got you know, clients with SAP, uh, JD Edwards, uh, Amdocs, a whole host of uh, different products in the back end, and Dynamics is really meant to integrate with them. Okay. Uh, we already talked about their investment before they spend. Uh, the last number I heard was about $9.5 billion a year in R&D. Uh, a good chunk goes to Dynamics CRM because it's seen by Microsoft to be that capstone. Uh, through which you access the rest of uh, 
uh, a lot of the tools that they have, okay, uh, or or tools that other companies have. Uh, last point here is it's really the only one that gives you multiple deployment choices. So you can, you know, run the old style where it's on premise. You know, you own it, you buy the licenses, you run it in your data center. Uh, but it will also do Microsoft hosted. Okay, so they'll it can be run from Microsoft's data center uh, or partner hosted. Okay, and in both Microsoft or or us if we hosted or another partner, uh, it runs in the cloud. And uh, we or Microsoft worry about uh, how to uh, manage the environment for you. And you don't have to deploy resources to do that. Okay, it's also a lot. Uh, you don't have a, a high upfront expense uh, with hosted as well. It's just a monthly uh, recurring cost. In terms of size, they have, uh, and this is I guess about six months old now. But uh, at this time, about two and a half million users, forty-five thousand customers. Uh, if you uh, look at the number of actual users, it's, it's one of the highest out there. If you look at share in terms of uh, what they charge for the license, uh, it's lower than some of the others uh, for a straight fact that uh, if you're only paying about half the cost for the license, for a dollar figure, the, the share is going to look older uh, or lower. Uh, but from a, a pure customer and user standpoint, uh, it has a very high number of users. Okay? Uh, they're global. Uh, we've got uh, some companies that we work with that have you know Spanish and French and uh, other languages if they uh, you know have a, a global implementation and it will support that. Uh, there's also over 1,200 partners that that are Dynamics focused uh, and uh, over 100 hosting partners, of which we're one. Okay, and that's that's it for the PowerPoint slides. Uh, I don't want to bore anybody, and I've seen too many <laughs> presentations where it's all slide-based. So I'll, I'll get right into uh, showing you what it looks like. Okay, so it runs out of Outlook. Now, we do have some companies that, that don't use Outlook. They'll use uh, Gmail or other things, and that's fine. We even have uh, one uh, that had used Lotus Notes. Uh, and in, in that case, you can actually run it out of that or, or even just out of a web browser or tablet. Uh, most companies though use Outlook and that's why I like showing it first. Okay, so here's Outlook 2010. It will work as far back as the 2003 version and as far forward as the uh, the current uh, 2013 version. So they, you know, as Microsoft is, is known to do, they support uh, previous versions so you're not stuck having to upgrade everything at once. Okay, uh, in here, you know, you've got your inbox, you've got your sent mail and everything. Just Essentially, it is Outlook. A few of the changes, though. Uh, in my inbox, you'll see that every now and then, uh, I've got these two little people attached to the email. What that means is that email is tracked in CRM. So if I click on it and delete it, I haven't lost it. It's tracked in my CRM system, and I can access it. Uh, the other thing is that anybody on my team can access it as well, Okay, so as long as they've got security rights to see it. And what that means is I can actually go on vacation. And if somebody needs an important email, it's there. Okay. To track, uh, all you have to do is uh, right-click on it and click track. And it's, it's that simple. You get the two little people, and now it's tracked into that contacts record in the system. Uh, and here he is right here. Okay. Uh, if I want to track it against an opportunity or a company uh, or a project or any of the other uh, areas in CRM that I have, I can do that just, again, by by right-clicking and instead of clicking track, just click set regarding and pick what I'd like to track it against. I like tracking personally against the uh, the person unless it's an opportunity uh, because CRM will actually roll it up for you. So if I'm looking at uh, Alex's company here, uh, it will actually roll up all the emails for any contacts or opportunities for the company so I'm not clicking around trying to find things. Okay, So it's great for pre-call planning. Okay, now I can actually go right from here, right from my Outlook, and click on Alex, and his record will open up in the system. So instead of having to log into you know, two or three different systems in the morning, everything's in one place, uh, and I can navigate to everything right from my Outlook. Okay, the other thing I can do is, um, you know, he's he's like he'd like to uh, maybe there's an opportunity there, and he'd like to meet, just to open up the email, and right from here I can convert it to an opportunity or to a service case or to a lead right from my email. I don't, again, have to exit and come go into another system to do that. OK, 
Okay. The other thing that's uh, in here that people like using is, um, you know, for uh, any appointments. So let's say I've got a contract meeting. Okay, right from my Outlook, right click on it, I can track it. Uh, and if people are, uh, you know, need to know where I am, it's uh, right in the calendar and it's tracked against that uh, 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 company that I'm meeting with. Uh, if, um, you know, I, uh, my manager wants to see where people are, let's say, uh, you know, they have an important meeting that's coming up and they'd like to uh, you know, find who might be able to attend, uh, it's tracked and, and he or she can see he or she can see uh, where people are at any given point in time. Okay, I've also got uh, all of my contacts in here. Now these are all the Outlook contacts. You'll see I've got this one tracked. Uh, really easy to track again. So if I'm meeting with somebody, uh, put them into my iPhone, uh, that automatically syncs into Outlook and I want to track that into my CRM. It's just a click. Okay, so there's not uh, you know copying and pasting and that type of thing that you might uh, see with other systems. Okay, and all my uh, tasks are in here as well. Okay, so that's some of the Outlook functionality. Now, uh, also in here, as you'd expect, you'd have uh, you know your dashboards, activities, uh, any of the companies and contacts, opportunities, and other things are right uh, in Outlook as well. So just to give you an example, uh, here's uh, here's my dashboard. I can actually have multiple dashboards. So I'll get into that later. So I've got uh, you know maybe things that I want to track as a rep. So here's my pipeline. There's some revenue by promotion activity. Here's my renewals that are coming up. Here's uh, people that are registered maybe for an event coming up. And here's all of my tasks and activities that I've got all in one place. Okay. And as I'll show later, this is uh, very configurable both uh, by your own companies and by people individually. Okay. So they can have their own custom dashboards. Okay. Uh, from here, I'll show one last thing. I'm just going to bring up, uh, show you companies. And let's look for one. Okay, here's Sharp. So here's all the companies that uh, you know have the name Sharp. Okay, now I've actually preloaded all of the Scotts, uh, the Scotts directories companies in Ontario in my CRM here. We'll often do that, uh, and based on the client, there's different sources that we'll use. So sometimes it's Scotts, uh, sometimes it's like D and B or Hoover's that type of thing. And sometimes we'll use uh, what we call smart data, uh, which is inside view, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, depending on the company, sometimes that's valuable, and uh, sometimes it's not. So it all depends on uh, the types of uh, organizations you're going after and how dynamic that uh, environment is. Okay. So here's, here's the list of the companies that contain Sharp. Uh, Sharp Electronics is the one I'm looking for. There's a little preview over here and uh, just click on it and now I've brought up their record. Okay. Now this, this layout is very flexible. I'll show a little bit of, uh, more on that uh, in a second. But I can have up to four fields uh, on every row uh, and it will actually scroll down a fair way. So everything is really in one place. The other thing that's uh, important to note here is that uh, in your organization, sometimes uh, you know, people that we work with will have multiple divisions or will have different roles within an organization that really need a different view of the same uh, end customer. So Dynamics allows you to do that. You can have multiple forms and just to give an idea, uh, we did one here for a brewery. Okay, and they want it to have uh, still the same, this is the same company, but now I've got sales over here and I can look over year over year sales all in one place. Okay, we'll go back to this form. Uh, now in here I've got, uh, we definitely do a lot of social media tie-ins, so here's our LinkedIn connection. I can click on that uh, to see uh, any updates on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, if I'm going out to visit with them, uh, just click on the map. Okay. There we go, and I can see uh, a picture of uh, you know what it looks like, and uh, here's the location, and then just go off and get directions and that type of thing. Okay, now this is something that I use for my iPhone all the time, uh, and the iPhone layout can be really any way you want it, or any 
any smartphone. Uh, the big difference between the tablet and uh, maybe running it through Outlook versus uh, a smartphone is that you essentially have one uh, one column uh, because that's about all you can fit on a little phone. And what I use it for is uh, often uh, doing a quick you know pre-call plan to see if there's anything I should know about before I walk in. And, and I also use the, the map all the time uh, because sometimes I'm <laughs> in transit and I have to remember how exactly to get there. Okay, some of the other things. We'll often tie into uh, back-end accounting systems, so we'll bring in things like last year's sales, year-to-date sales, uh, their credit status, uh, AR information, okay, maybe invoices. That can be really handy from an account management standpoint. Okay, uh, may also want to track relationships, and this can be important for, uh, especially if your organizations deal with intermediaries. Uh, that may be retailers that sell to the end customer. It could be uh, distributors that sell to, uh, you know, end retailers. Uh, it could be, um, you know, engineering firms that, that do uh, design specs for uh, the end customers as well. So relationships allow you to keep track of things like companies and contacts and maybe opportunities that relate to this company uh, but aren't directly related. So they're not, uh, let's say, contacts that, you know, are employees of the company. Okay, we'll often uh, tie in projects for companies that are project uh, oriented. So there might be uh, weekly reports or project plans or other things we'll embed as well in here. Okay, uh, documents, if you have document management systems like SharePoint, uh, they can be integrated. So as soon as you create a new company, uh, it will go off into SharePoint and create a folder for it. And then any relevant documents are shown here. So you don't have to exit your CRM system to go to a document management system to find things. It's all in one place. Okay. Uh, the other thing that's already here as well uh, is any notes and activities are in here. So as soon as you create a new note, it will put a time and date stamp on it, tell you who made it, and you can even browse and attach a document to the note. Okay. So if you don't have a document management system, that's okay. Uh, you can still uh, attach any proposals and contracts and other things uh, right within the note section. Okay, you know, the other thing that, that usually we'll have in a, in a company record are any outbound activities uh, or inbound. Uh, so that might be appointments, phone calls. Um, I'll use this for an example all the time, so I've got a lot of appointment examples. Uh, tasks uh, and other things, either with that company or with any contact or opportunity that are associated with that company. Okay, so you've got everything in one place. Okay, now here's all the contacts that are associated. Okay, uh, you know, I've got com uh, contacts as well and opportunities. Okay, so if I'm looking for a contact, I'll just type in, uh, let's say, uh, there you go, here's Sarah Thomas, and here's Sarah Thomas's record at Sharp. Okay, now I'm going to pop out of Outlook. Everything I've done so far is in Outlook. Uh, just to show you that the web browser looks very much the same. And you might use this, uh, you know, just on a, often people in a call center environment like running with a, a web browser. It's uh, pretty quick to bring up information uh, if they're not in Outlook all the time. Uh, or uh, sales or service people on the road will often want to pick, uh, uh, open their CRM right through a web browser instead of, um, you know, if they, you can't load uh, uh, Outlook on a, on a tablet. Uh, you can definitely uh, bring up uh, a web browser, you know, very quickly. Okay, so here's the tablet uh, or browser-based view, and let's look for Sarah Thomas again. That's who I brought up in Outlook just a second ago. Okay, here's her record. Uh, so I've got just like in companies, uh, I've got different layout options based on my role. You know, here's her map. Uh, I can have her LinkedIn connection too if I want. Uh, here's all the uh, outbound communications I might want to keep track of. And I often, uh, this one was done for an aircraft company. Uh, so they wanted to know if they could have uh, their own fields in here. And yes, you can. Uh, the, the marketing communications area is uh, uh, really important to uh, outbound marketing programs. So with CRM, you can have, uh, well included in it, are something called dynamic marketing lists. 
And what that means is the marketing list is dynamically built based on what you say you want to have in as uh, uh, opt-in options for the list. So you can have a simple one like uh, everywhere where somebody has the holiday card clicked on, then add them to the holiday card list. Okay? Or you might be putting together a golf tournament and all the people where you know, their golfers clicked on and maybe the company of it is a certain type. So let's say they're customers and type A customers, then put them on the list. Okay? And it can also be even more involved. So you might say, I'd like everybody on, on this list where uh, their role is finance executive and the company that they work for is in this industry and the company is a prospect and they're within this certain geography. So if all that's correct, then I'd like them to be part of this marketing list. Okay? And you can do, as I'll show later, an outbound marketing campaign where you're keeping track not only of, okay, I'm sending out this, this email, let's say, but uh, also feedback in who's, who's received it, who's opened it, what links have they clicked on. And through workflow, you can automate the process so you can have that full closed loop model to say, okay, we're sending out 500 emails. Uh, anybody that opens and clicks on this link, we'd like to do a follow-up sales activity. And that can all be managed through workflow, so it just runs. Okay? And the starting point of that is this, this dynamic marketing list capability that's built right into it. You know, also in contacts, we'll often keep track of, again, relationships, just like we talked about in companies, uh, event registrations, and that could be both physical uh, and uh, virtual events, like web events, like you're in today. And we can also do uh, courses and course registration for those firms that, uh, you know, manage uh, different training uh, seminars that customers might actually pay for. Uh, we'll often do... Uh, as I talked about with the marketing communications, we can show you uh, what links they clicked and when they clicked it, they forwarded it, that type of thing. Okay, and keep track of uh, updates and notes and uh, as I, we looked at with companies, activities and, and uh, that type of thing right within uh, uh, in the CRM record. Okay, so that's uh, contacts. Now for opportunity management, there's a whole area for that. Uh, here's a list of opportunities. Now opportunities are something where uh, you can have very different looks and feel and flow on an opportunity based on uh, the types of uh, sales your company actually does. So what I'll show you today is one way of doing it. There's many other different ways. And we'll configure that based on, on uh, client needs. Okay, so an opportunity will, will usually have a name, uh, will be linked to a customer, could also be linked to a contact. Uh, we'll have a, a promotion that may have uh, kicked it off, uh, would have uh, maybe a lead source as well. Uh, and there may be other things involved like uh, estimated revenue, close date, next step, next step date, uh, sales stage, probability of win and so forth. Uh, for some organizations, we've done uh, some member-based organizations that still have opportunities, but they're a little different. So it might be, uh, you know, sponsors that they're going after, and there's various sales stage for going after sponsorships. Uh, there's other companies that have, um, you know, may not be revenue they're going after; they're going after something else in terms of uh, putting together uh, partnerships and that type of thing. Uh, but they can still use opportunities. We would just configure the screen a little differently. Okay. For a pure sales opportunity, uh, what we'll often do is bake in sales process right within the opportunity. So for a small opportunity, uh, you know, companies may want to confirm they have a budget, uh, senior management support, they've got a need, and that may be all you need. If the opportunity is a very large one, we might uh, bring in things uh, that are a real sales process uh, uh, and sales methodology uh, you know, methodologies for larger opportunities, you know, one or two million dollar opportunities. And that's where you might be getting into, uh, you know, who do we know, uh, networking within the organization. Uh, we can actually pull in your LinkedIn uh, connections as an organization to see who knows whom uh, at a company. And I, I, we talk more on that in our sales process uh, webinar. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, simple questions like, can we win? Uh, is there a compelling need? And other things that the formal sales methodologies will bring to the table. And that's baked right into your opportunity uh, instead of having to go outside to fill out paperwork or fill in questions and answers at another site. It's all in one place. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we'll often do, if there are products or services attached to the opportunity, we can actually have them here and even do quoting and other things right within uh, CRM. Okay. Now, back to that list of opportunities. Uh, now, this, this is a list of opportunities, but it could easily be a list of uh, service issues or uh, a list of companies or a list of really anything. It's called a view, and a view, you can have multiple views per entity. Okay, right now I'm looking at my open opportunities. And you can configure your own views right with doing a query, and you can say these are the columns that I'd like to see. Okay, we'll often see, see sales reps changing their view in activities where they're doing outbound phone calls and, and want to have it look a certain way uh, that matches their work style. Okay? Uh, now, if you wanted to analyze, the, let me, let's say a sales manager analyzing their opportunities, or you know, sometimes a member management uh, organization might be uh, analyzing the renewal list or analyzing uh, their existing member list, you can do a number of things. Uh, one thing is you could pick everybody and send it over to Excel and analyze it in pivot tables or filters or that type of thing. And because it's all part of the Microsoft uh, dynamic suite, uh, it actually works with Excel and Excel can become a front end to your CRM. So if you save that spreadsheet and open it up a month from now, just click refresh and Excel will refresh with your, your most current information. You don't have to go through that you know, exporting, and loading and formatting every time. You can also take that Excel spreadsheet, send it to somebody else within your organization, and when they open it, they'll see it with the information they've got access to, not your information. And that can be very valuable for an organization that has you know, various branches or divisions, and they can actually share best practice uh, and reporting and things like that, and know that people that are opening it aren't going to have access to potentially uh, sensitive information that they shouldn't have access to. Okay. Aside from Excel, uh, what they've done with this most current version is they've taken some of the Excel functionality and moved it right into CRM. Uh, so filtering is an example of that. Uh, just click filter and now all the columns are filterable just like in Excel. Okay. The other thing that they've done is they've moved the charting into CRM. So the one that I like is looking at the opportunities by sales stage. Okay, so here's a funnel showing all my opportunities here by sales stage, and if I move my mouse over it, I can see what, so this is the proposal submitted stage, and I can see the, the revenue there. If I click it, now I can see, okay, these are the opportunities in that stage because it's dynamic, and then I can keep drilling down, so I can look at it by uh, owning sales rep, or I could look at it by, let's say, probability of win. Okay. So there's, uh, you know, I can see that there's uh, uh, at the 60% stage, I've got almost half a million dollars. I click it, and now I can see the opportunities at that stage. Okay, and I could keep drilling down and drilling down and drilling down. This chart uh, can be brought over onto my dashboard very easily. It takes less than a minute. Okay, so I can actually build a, a personal dashboard for myself, uh, or it can be built centrally. And the chart itself is, is very easy to build. Okay, and just to give you an example of this one with all that drill down capability, uh, it was just a matter of uh, clicking on charts, new chart, and I was looking at estimated revenue by sales stage. Okay, and let's change the chart type to a funnel, and that's really all there is to it. Uh, give it a name that I like, save and close, and then it's part of the standard charts uh, in the system. And that dashboard that I showed you initially, uh, essentially this is how I, I brought this chart over to it. And I'll just show you the dashboard. We'll go to workplace. Okay, and then there's that chart that I added. Okay, uh, if I wanted to edit it and change, maybe add another chart element, essentially just click edit and uh, pull it over and I can make it bigger or smaller, save it, and now I've uh, updated my uh, dashboard. 
Okay, it's that easy. Uh, in here, I've everything links. So if I want to see my estimated revenue by promotion activity, so here's where it is, or I want to see my contract renewals, uh, it's all here. If I want to update it in real time, just click it and update it. It's really the only one that it can update things so quickly uh, in the marketplace. Uh, some will only do it in uh, batch, uh, including its biggest competitor, and you only get a couple updates a day. Uh, the other thing that I can do is just click on the link here and go right to that view, and then I'm in uh, in it, and then I can just go in and change things and you know drill down on other things right right from here. Okay. Scoot over into marketing for a second. Let's look at companies. Now uh, the views, and I'm going to show you how to create them. I created one. Uh, you know, here for example, uh, you know, engineering companies in uh, in Toronto. So I've got 156 of them according to Scotts. Uh, I I created that view just by uh, creating a query, and I'm looking at where the industry code is this number and the city is Toronto, and then I saved it, and now I just have a standard view. I could just as easily say, um, uh, let's, let's take the industry code again, but uh, in this case, let's look at schools. Okay, and um, look at the results. So I've got 426 schools in Toronto, and uh, then just save and close, and now I can have a new view for schools. Okay, you can get more complex than that. So right now I was just looking at uh, fields in in the uh, company itself, but you can actually look and do a query in not only that entity, which is companies, but in any entity that relates to it. So I could look at all of the uh, companies with open opportunities that are at a certain sales stage, for example, or I could look at all the contacts who are, you know, VPs of uh, finance and uh, who are in a certain industry segment and whose company is uh, a prospect and are in the, uh, uh, you know, in Ontario or, or Western regions. Okay, uh, very easily do it and then save and then I can create a marketing campaign out of that. Okay, now the other thing that I can do, let's say this is a view set up for my call route as a sales rep and I want to figure out uh, how best to hit all of those on that trip. Uh, I can pick the ones that I think I want to visit. Okay, take a look at my map, and now they are all mapped out. In this case, the color coding means, uh, I think, uh, red is lapsed customers, uh, blue is existing, and uh, green is uh, uh, ones that I have active opportunities with. Okay, but you can change the, uh, the color coding uh, so it really matches uh, your way of working. A lot of companies will um, will color code it so that if uh, the reps are in different you know, areas, uh, let's say they, they do city by city uh, over the course of a month, uh, you might want to have uh, you know, companies who uh, I haven't met with in greater than X period of time might be uh, red. So let's say I haven't seen them in six months and I should have. Uh, you know, green ones might be ones that I'm okay with and blue they're, they're sort of on the border. Okay, or I might want to you know, customers versus prospects versus uh, lapsed customers is, is in this case, uh, might be the different colors. Okay, now when I, I do an outbound marketing campaign, uh, let's just take a look at uh, marketing communications. And now this is all just dummy data because people would get upset if every time I showed it I actually sent out real email. So I created one called uh, webinar campaign. So I've got 152 emails in here. And with that charting that we looked at before, I can look at maybe a breakdown by city and see, okay, well, who's in Toronto? Okay, and this is the list of the ones that went to Toronto. And let's drill down. So I might want to look at it by uh, uh, maybe communication score or uh, maybe look at it by, um, let's do it this way, by communication score. So in here I can see that uh, of the 180, 152 in Toronto, uh, two uh, bounce back. So I'd want to uh, follow up on those because it might be that those people left the company and that might be a trigger point. So things have changed. So it may be an idea really for me to focus efforts on getting in there again. Uh, eight of them were received but not opened. I've got 39 received and opened. 16 received open and they clicked on one link. 
and 87 received open and clicked on two links. And with that workflow that we talked about in the background, I can automate it. So if they clicked on a certain link or they, they have a, a score that exceeds, in this case, four, uh, or equals, equals or exceeds four, then I can schedule a follow-up call with sales uh, because they've shown some interest in that. And that can really create a lot of value for the sales organization. So instead of sending out you know, maybe 500 emails in a month and following up on all 500, I'll only follow up on the ones that have expressed interest in that. So it allows sales to focus their time better uh, and have a better close rate. Okay. The other thing that we can do is uh, not only uh, when they're clicking on emails to have that reporting back in the system, but also close the loop further and even tell you, you know, of, of the ones we have a relationship with, here's the ones that are actually coming back to the website. Uh, this is what we're, they're looking at. This is how much time they're spending, okay, to really have that full closed-loop marketing model right in here. And you can even use workflow again to say, okay, well, they came to the website and they looked at this on the website. Uh, let's do a follow-up call with them as well. So in addition to the email, you've also got the uh, uh, marketing insights through your website and uh, actually tie right back into who they are. All right, so that's the uh, that's a, a bit of an overview on marketing. Uh, Rob, is there anything that I missed that you wanted me to show uh, in this case? Do you want me to show that inside view? Yeah, if you can show inside view, we call it smart data, so leveraging smarter data to target companies and contacts. So yeah, if you can cover that, that would be great. Okay, so I don't think they have it in this environment yet, and just so people know, this is. Uh, an environment that I use to show things where I won't actually send emails out or, or do things that so it's, it's locked off. Uh, so we're getting our smart data implemented in it. They have a, a special firewall that they want to put up so it doesn't actually go out and do things. Uh, but for now, what I'll do is I'll show uh, a, sl a couple of slides. Okay, so what inside view is it embeds right within the contact record in CRM, or the, well, actually this contact and company. I usually use it out of companies. So uh, when you're looking at a company like Sharp in this case, it will actually show you uh, top level information like uh, you know revenue, number of employees uh, at that location. Uh, it will actually show you who they are. So it will show you uh, key individuals at the C-level and below. Uh, any industry buzz uh, such as uh, social media, uh, things that are posting on their website, they actually aggregate over is it 3,000 or 30,000, Rob, uh, different uh, data points? It's 30,000. They're up? Yep, it's 30,000. 30, okay, so it's, it's a, a fair number. They cast a wide net. Um, so it, it, it will show you things about that company that you might be calling in right within your system. Uh, it will also show you, uh, again, the key people. But you can also set triggers on it. Okay, and this is something that I like doing. So you can say that uh, if they've had a change in management, so maybe they've brought in a new VP of operations, it will actually funnel that information right through to your email, okay, or we can have it funnel in through uh, CRM itself, and then you can do follow-up sales activity on that. And those trigger points have been shown over time and, and proven to be the times that you want to get into organizations because at a time of change, that's when they make different purchase decisions. So where you may have been stuck in the past or you know, it's gotten no decision because they're, they're not ready yet, uh, what the, the change means is that they've made a decision, they're going forward with something, and they will be going forward with change, uh, and that's where you want to be part of that conversation. Okay. Now we have a whole webinar where we'll actually show that uh, within CRM. Uh, we've got our, another environment that we do it out of and uh, Rob's actually the one that walks uh, people through that. So if you are interested, feel free to reach out to Rob, uh, and we can show how we can bake smart data right into your CRM. 